Jackie. The Jello program starring Jack Denny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with I Double Dare You. There's a play that recently opened in New York City called Hooray for What? Well, here's one answer to that question. It's Jell-O, and you'll all cheer for Jell-O because it's one of the grandest dishes you can serve. It's quick, it's inexpensive, it's delicious. And you can vary it in all sorts of ways to keep your menus different and interesting. Try Jell-O with sliced bananas or canned fruits. Decorate it with chopped nuts and whipped cream. Or make little tart shells and fill them with Jell-O. Oh, you'll think of dozens and dozens of variations because Jell-O's six delicious flavors lend themselves perfectly to all sorts of marvelous combinations. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, or lime. Just be sure you get genuine Jell-O. For only Jell-O brings you that delicious, extra-rich fruit flavor. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. I double dare you played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that human dynamo, that bundle of energy who is always bubbling over with pep and vitality, Jack Benny. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And, Don, that was an awfully nice send-off you gave me, although you picked the wrong night for it. I, I was never so tired in my life. Well, I see, Jack. Then you're not bubbling over as usual. Bubbling over? Don, tonight I'm not even capable of a small drool. <laughs> I'm just completely worn out. Well, you were all right last week, Jack. What happened since then? It's that new picture I'm going to make, the rehearsing, the test, the costume. And on top of that, I'm having trouble getting the right makeup. Gee whiz, they ought to know how to make you up by this time. Well, they ought to, but they don't. You should see my screen test. I got a little dimple in my chin and a photograph like the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Not only that, my eyes look like Minneapolis and St. Paul. <laughs> see, I look like I'm working for Rand McNally. Well, I, I just can't understand that, Jack. Neither can I. I've got the same makeup man that Fred McMurray has. Well, Jack, Fred McMurray is younger and a naturally handsome type. Well, what do you think I am? You know, Paramount isn't signing any gargoyles to long-term contracts. <laughs> you know that. Well, then maybe it is the fault of the makeup man. I don't know, but you know what burns me up, Don? He dashes into McMurray's dressing room, puts a little powder on his face, and Fred is all set. Oh. Then when he comes over to make me up, he takes off his coat, opens his bag, and pulls out a blueprint. <laughs> I'll admit that I'm not an Adonis, but I, I have led a good conservative life. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you have, Jack. Don, you've never seen me carousing around, have you? No, no, I haven't. Well, here's what kills me. That guy McMurray goes to the Trocadero one night, the Coconut Grove the next night, then the Clover Club. He stays up night after night, and I show him. <laughs> anyway, I'll be glad when I get started on my picture and it's over with. Now, who's going to be your leading lady, Jack? Oh, hello, Mary. I didn't see you. What did you say? I said, who's going to be your leading lady? I told you last week it's Francisca Gall, that new Viennese star. You remember, I went over to her house to rehearse last Sunday night. Oh, yes, I remember. She invited Phil Harris, too. Yes, Curly Locks had to come along. <laughs> Phil spent the whole evening teaching her how to do the Big Apple, and I sat there like a worm. <laughs> Every time I make a picture, Phil falls in love with my leading lady. Why don't you play off the wreck, the Wonder Horse? <laughs> Thanks, Mary. I'd look fine with a horse on my lap. What part would I play, a jockey? No, a milk wagon. Oh, quiet. And don't give me any more suggestions. Well, here comes Cupid's little ambassador now. Hello, Jack, old boy. How's the Waukegan wallflower? <laughs> fine, thank you. How's my kinky-headed leech? <laughs> oh, just dandy. I never felt better in your life. Well, stay out of my life. You certainly fixed up my rehearsal last Sunday night. I was there to work with Miss Gall, and you stand around distracting her attention. Well, I was just trying to be sociable. And then you had to suggest that I go out and buy some ice cream. What about it? Well, the least you could have done was eat it when I brought it back. 
Go on, I didn't want any ice cream. Oh, you didn't? Then what did you send me? Oh, I get it. Uh huh. You wanted to be alone with Miss Gow. Uh huh. I see. See, I thought there was something fishy about that ice cream. Uh, what flavor was it, Barracuda? <laughs> I can't figure out how I could have been so gullible. Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. What's eating you? Permites. I got a wooden head. <laughs> Kenny, I always thought that you were dumb, but I'm really a sap. For plain ordinary stupidity, I've got you backed off the map. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Now listen, Kenny. I've got a date with a girl. Phil comes along. They want some. They want some ice cream, and I go out for it. Top that. All right. I had a date with a girl. Another fellow came along. Nobody wanted ice cream, and I still went out for it. Top that. <laughs> well. Get this. I had a date with a fellow once. His girlfriend came along and hit me in the face with a banana split. I don't think that's so funny. Well, I laugh. Yeah, and the banana split. <laughs> Why, Kenny, that's a nifty. Yeah, I wish I could think of one like that every week. Well, go ahead and sing before you have a brain <laughs> Banana thought. split. Wasn't that awful, Mary? Yeah, it's a good thing he can sing. Yeah. There's a someone for everyone. If you turn at the proper time and place, you will greet love and meet love face to face. There's a someone for everyone. Fate was kind, oh so very kind to me. All at once, a thrill I'd never known. And there was I. From Love and Hisses, sung by our wit and humorist, Penny Baker. And now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> what are you laughing at? Sliced banana. I mean, banana split. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, go away, Kenny. As we announced last Sunday, tonight we are going to present the outstanding achievement of the Benny Gill. Our own dramatic version of Samuel Goldwyn's screen triumph, The Hurricane, or I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles. For the benefit of those who haven't seen the picture, the locale of our play is the little island of Manakura in the South Sea, which is just halfway between Tahiti and Bismarck, North Dakota. <laughs> I, w I will play the part of Governor DeLoss, as mean a man as ever ate a popsicle at a hanging. Mary Livingston will play the part of Germaine, my wife. I will not. You will, too. Now, Don Wilson will be the captain, and Phil Harris will be the doctor. Why can't I be Phil's wife? Because he hasn't got a wife. Now, Kenny will then be... Then why can't I be Don's wife? Look, Don hasn't got a wife either. He's just got a boat. 
Well, why can't I be John's boat? Mary, you're going to be my wife. If it'll make you any happier, I'll put a sail on you. <laughs> now, Penny Baker will be one of the natives. Tall, dark, and barefooted. Barefooted? Won't I catch cold? You won't catch cold. You're in the South Sea. Oh, then I'll drown. Look, Penny, you're on an island. How can you drown on an island? Don't worry. I'll find a way. <laughs> I hope so. Anyway, you're a native, and that settles it. Now, in our version of this play... Hmm, a native yet. Now... <laughs> now, in our version of this play, we will endeavor to give you a vivid portrayal of how it feels to be hit on the head with a hurricane. Now, this play will go on... Hmm, pardon me, folks. Hello? Hiya, Buck! Well, Andy! Hey, we expected you up here tonight. I thought you were going to be in our play. I was going to, but Ma saw the picture and thought I was too delicate for it. <laughs> oh, does she know we're going to do Hurricane tonight? I think so, Buck. She put the radio down in the cyclone cellar. Well, I'm sorry you're not going to be with us tonight, Andy. I had a swell part for you. You did? Yes, sir. You were going to be one of the natives, and there's a real hula dancer in love with you. Is she pretty? Andy, she's gorgeous. Well, wait a minute. What's that, Pa? What? <laughs> what are you laughing at, Andy? Paul wants to know if she's got a friend. Oh, is your Paul home? Yeah, he's here hopping around on a broom. What's he doing, sweeping the floor? No, he's been drinking again and he thinks he's Mother Goose. <laughs> well, Andy, I'm sorry you're not coming over, but be sure and listen in, huh? I sure will. So long, Buck. So long. Well, it's too bad Andy can't be with us. Is everything all set, fellas? Yep, let's go. Okay, so now, folks, while Phil is playing the next number, we will get on an imaginary boat and sail away to the South Sea. Hit it, Phil. <laughs> was Snake Charmer, played by Phil Harris, a snake if there ever was one, and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction, The Hurricane. As the scene opens, we learn that Governor DeLage has sentenced Parangi, a young native, to 20 years imprisonment in Tahiti, much against the wishes of his friends and the populace of the island. The locale is the island of Manakura, the residence of Governor DeLage. And as the curtain rises, we hear in the distance the chant of one of the natives. <laughs> ah, how happy and carefree the natives are on this island. How peaceful is this paradise lost in the middle of a vast ocean. Yes, Captain, you're right. But there's only one thing wrong. I know what you mean, Doctor. We're governed by the meanest, cruelest tyrant at all the South Sea. Governor Delage. That's me, folks. He's hard, he's stubborn, he's merciless. Yes, he's just a tropical meanie. You're right, Doctor. I wish he'd get sick so I could give him the wrong medicine. To him, the law is everything. Nothing else matters. Here comes the governor now. Look unhappy. Uh, good evening, governor. Good evening, governor. Grr. That settles that. Governor, we're here to see you Silence, about... Silence, gentlemen. You came here again to ask me to pardon that native boy, Tarangi. You're wasting your breath. I sent him to prison in Tahiti, 600 miles away, and there he must stay. But, Your Excellency, it was such a trivial offense. Ah, the captain is right. Why such a severe penalty? Because it's the law. <laughs> Dr. Harris, you and I have been friends for a good many years. And when you ask me to change my principles, forego my belief in justice, you're a going to hurrah. But, Governor, that boy Parangi is the most popular native on the island. He sure is, Govey. Govey? Why, the girls here would rather have a smile from him than a kiss from Robert Taylor. How do you know? I've been having trouble, too. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I refuse to pardon Parangi, and that's final. But why, Govey? Yes, why? Because it's the law! <laughs> What is that? Major Bowles, he just arrived with the unit. <laughs> oh, he sure gets around. Well, gentlemen, I hope I've made myself clear. Harangi stays in jail. 
But what crime did he commit to warrant 20 years in prison? 20 years of hard labor. What crime? He stole a coconut. Why, Governor, there are thousands and thousands of coconuts on this island, but this one had milk in it. <laughs> and great A, too. But, Your Excellency, all coconuts have milk in them. That's immaterial, irrelevant, and news to me. <laughs> anyway, Tarangi was found guilty of the crime, and he must serve his sentence. But why such a severe one? Because it's a... Wait for me! <laughs> Anyway, I'm boss around here. Come in. Hello. Ah, my good wife. Ah, my no good husband. <laughs> what have you got in that basket, darling? Coconut. Coconut? Where did you get them? Don't worry, I bought them. Well, I'm glad to hear that. But I stole the money out of your pants. <laughs> oh, pardon me, gentlemen. Uh, good evening, Madame Delage. Good evening, Captain Wilson. Good evening, Madame Delage. Hello, Toot. Jermaine, remember, you are addressing a physician, Dr. Harris. A fine doctor. Yesterday he tried to take my temperature with a clarinet. A clarinet? Yeah, he said I had a bad case of Benny Goodman. Is that your diagnosis, Dr. Harris? Yeah, ma'am. Well, gentlemen, I believe our business is finished. Uh, Madam Delarge, we've been trying to persuade the governor to pardon Parangi. After all, it was such a minor offense. Sure, why don't you let him go? Jermaine, crime is crime. When a man steals, he goes to jail. Unless it's second base. Harangi must be punished. But, dear, why 20 years in prison? Because it's delightful. It's delicious. It's the lovely. It's the law. <laughs> and I don't want to hear another word about it. What's that? It's the ladies. They're all worked up about Harangi. They're in a bad mood, Your Excellency. Yes, I warn you, they're going to make trouble. Oh, so they're after me, eh? Uh, bah, I'm not afraid. Look, look, one of them's coming this way. Yes, it's Harangi's brother. All right, show him in. Oh, so it's you, Penny Lua. What do you want this time? Anna, Poopy, Kapua, Boka, Tarangi. Tarangi, Yuki, Zubalua. Zubalua, Konakika, Karango. Watch your language, son. <laughs> There's a lady present. Oh, I'm broad-minded. Jermaine, go to your room. Oh, Coca-Cola Maluka. <laughs> Jermaine, do you know what you're saying? No, and neither do you. Now listen to me, Kenny Lua. Hola, you got Tarangi. Tarangi Papula Kapua Mola. Kopi Kila. <laughs> and that's Kuba Gula. Oh, go still on attack a Lua. <laughs> mm, a fine native. You better be careful, Gubby. They're not going to take it on the chin forever. As long as I'm governor of these islands, the law will be upheld. I've made up my mind about Tarangi. Nothing can swerve. Nothing can move me. Wait till that hurricane comes along. Hurricane? Bah! We haven't had a hurricane here in 20 years. It doesn't worry me. Then why they got this to say packed on? Because it's the law! <laughs> Well, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me now, I'll retire. I've had a very busy day. Will I be seeing you tomorrow, Captain Wilson? Uh, no, I think not, Governor. I'm sailing with the tide. I have a jello cargo for Pango Pango. Well, good luck, all. Goodbye, all. Hmm. Seems to be something very peculiar in the air tonight. An eerie feeling. Have you noticed the doctor? Yes, and I don't like it. I remember 20 years ago when this same peculiar wind... Ah, quiet. What's that again? The lady. They're sending a message of warning. They know when there's a hurricane brewing. Bah. And look at the birds heading south. They're flying away. Well, let them fly. Yeah, we'll show them something in a few minutes. Right. You two make me sick. I'm going to bed. Gee, I'm scared. Why, it's nothing but a little wind. We've had wind before. Good night, darling. I'll see you in the morning. Look for me over Pomona. A little breeze isn't going to scare me. Fasten those shutters. What shutters? Those are my ears. Well, fasten them. Okay, throw me a bobby pin. Governor, Governor, you...
Your Excellency, Durangi has escaped from prison. Durangi escaped? Yes, and he's right here on this island. Well, I'm going to get him, and he's got to go back. I'm going out to find Durangi, and when I do... Answer the phone, Jermaine. Hello? Yes? Governor Tarangi. Tarangi? Give me that phone. Hello, Tarangi. Hello, Spencer. <laughs> So it is you. When did you escape from prison? Puka Pula Vini Vini Tutta Bala Bala yesterday. Yesterday? How did you get out of jail? I pardoned myself with a hacksaw. Oh, am I exhausted? I swam all the way. You swam 600 miles from Tahiti to Manakura in one day? How could you do that? A shark was pushing me. A shark, eh? What happened? What could happen? He swallowed me. Why, that's ridiculous. Where's the shark? Where do you think I'm calling? From a phone booth? <laughs> That's a lie, Tarangi. You're hiding. You're not inside of a shark. I am, too. I don't believe it. Wait till you see me in Ripley's column. You can't fool me, Tarangi. You're not in the water. You're someplace on this island, and I'm going to track you down. All right, but if you better get the goldfish for bloodhounds. Goodbye. Tarangi! Tarangi! I'm going to put him back in that cell if it's the last thing I do. Captain Wilson, get the iron. Okay. You'd better wait until the storm blows over, Gov. We'll need every man on the island. Ah, this is a fine time for a win. Look, Your Excellency, the natives are taking to their boats. Let them go, the fools. They won't find it any safer out there. Come on, let's go. Not in this storm. Listen to that wind. Gargling. Hermaine, this is no time for levity. <laughs> Prepare your boat for immediate sailing. Aye, aye, Governor. But look, the boat is gone. The boat's gone. Where is it? That ain't the kind of clipper flying over it. Germaine, stay close to me. Captain! Captain Wilson, where is he? He just went into a tailspin. Well, I might as well blow too. So long. <laughs> I'll let them all blow. I'm going to bed. You better hurry. It just went out of the window. Oh, well, this is a hurricane. Hermine! Hermine, where are you? On the roof. Captain Wilson. Oh, Captain Wilson. Oh, Captain Wilson. If you happen to blow by a grocery store, be sure and stop off for a package of Jell-O. Try all its six delicious flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Are you through, Wilson? Yes! Then let's go! Mm. The storm is subsiding. Everything is swept away, leaving nothing but desolation in its wake. Not a bird, not a flower, not a tree left on this island. Nay, not even a coconut. Out. <laughs> <laughs> well, just one, anyway. <laughs> ah, my poor little wife. Where is she? Germaine. Germaine. At last she's gone, too. Good heavens, what a storm. What a wind. Come in. Governor Delarge? Yes. Would you like to buy an electric fan? Get out of here! How did he get on this island? Wait, Bill. <laughs> Here's a swell suggestion for this time of the year, and it's something new and different. It's orange jello salad, a delicious new way to get a touch of sunshine into your winter menu. It's easy to make, and it's inexpensive, too. Dissolve one package of orange jello, chill until slightly thickened, and then fold in two oranges, cut up into sections, one cup of diced celery, and a teaspoon of vinegar. Chill until firm. Orange jello salad is lovely to look at with its clear golden beauty. 
And it's grand to eat, with oranges and crisp celery making a new and unusual combination. So I'll try this attractive new salad tomorrow. Just be sure to use genuine Jell-O, for Jell-O brings you that luscious, extra-rich fruit flavor. So remember, whether it's for salads or desserts, always ask your grocer for Jell-O. number of the 18th program of the new Jell-O series, and we're with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Oh, Jack. What is it, Mary? A telegram just came to you. Oh. It's the Malton Cook, radio editor of the New York World Telegram. As if I didn't know. What does it say, Mary? It says, Dear Jack, in the seventh annual national radio editor's poll conducted by the World Telegram, you were chosen the most popular comedian on the air. This makes the fifth consecutive year that you have won this honor. Wow. Well. Wait a minute. That isn't all. It also says John Wilson was picked as the most popular announcer, and Kenny Baker was second among all male popular singers. Well, well, Alton, I just want to say that all of us on the Jell-O program are deeply grateful and highly honored. We want to thank you, all the editors and our listeners. Come on, Jack, here's your hat. It doesn't fit now. Good night. <laughs> Baker appears on the Jell-O program through courtesy of Mervyn Leroy Productions. This is the National Broadcasting Company.